Okay, so part three on our complete how to fish for walleye on the Detroit River specific to vertical jigging. Today's video, we're discussing line and lure selection. Before we get started, I just wanted to thank all of you for all your great feedback and comments on our last two videos. It's really satisfying to know I may have assisted you in any way of helping you a better fisherman on the water. So keep those comments and questions coming and don't forget to turn on those notifications for our future videos. So let's get started. Line and lure selection. With our last two videos, we discussed the importance of boat control. We discussed the importance of having the right gear. So no different than selecting the right rod in order to feel those strikes. Uh, line is very important too. Uh, a lot of the fishermen locally have been changing to braid as opposed to fluorocarbon or monofilament. Now the reason being is that it has zero stretch. Brands like PowerPro, Suffix 832, Persistent Feminine, if I said that right, Berkley's, these are all superior braided lines that have zero stretch. We use eight to 10 pound. The reason we use high vid, because if you're on boat control, the color contrast against the water on those bright days, you can correct your vertical that much faster if you could see your line. I even take it a step further. I'll slip on before the barrel swivel, a high vis foam bobber that floats to the surface. So on those very sunny days when the sun's in your eyes, or if you have watery eyes or allergies, and you can't necessarily see the line, you'll definitely see this foam bobber that's floating on the surface. It allows you to make those corrections in vertical with your trolling motor that much faster. From there, we tie to a barrel swivel. I used to tie directly to the jig because I wanted to feel that strike instantaneously. However, after a few sessions on the water, I noticed that you get a severe line twist, and that leads to wind knots around your tip top and a coiled mess, even though it's braid. So the barrel swivel eliminates that line twist and keeps that jig popping vertical directly up and down with no twist. So now from our barrel swivel, we have a leader that's tied directly to our jig. You want to have that between 16 and 24 inches. Most people use fluorocarbon or a monofilament. I go back to straight braid because I want zero stretch in that line. So the only purpose of this leader is to have a break point to tie your barrel swivel to avoid line twists. And the only time you do snag on the Detroit River is when you're dragging bottom or you're fishing the Trenton Channel. Any questions so far? Okay, good. All right, welcome back. So now let's talk about our jig selection when vertical jigging walleye on the Detroit River. I like to use the best of the best and Domo's custom tackle jigs are superior to anything else on the market. It is a high quality four rod hook. There's a multitude of different shapes and colors for you to choose from. I want to tell you that I use the same shape and color throughout the entire walleye season. What is important is the weight. Detroit River at its deepest point, depending on the water levels, is between 55 and 52 feet. Now, depending on your level of expertise, a one ounce might suffice at that level. 40 feet and less, use a three quarter. 30 feet and less, use five eighths. 20 feet or less, use a half ounce. Now, as soon as you get comfortable feeling bottom, it's at that point where you wanna start using a lighter jig. What gets these fish to strike is not the color of your jig, it's not the shape of its head, it's how it presents itself falling back down the water column. Before it hits bottom, you want to simulate a dying bait fish. So from our jig, we are into our soft plastic selection, and I prefer to use a finesse style minnow. This is a four inch with a split tail. It is scented infused. I use this presentation throughout the entire season. On the other hand, my brother uses a wine dot worm and is as equally as successful as I am. So there are hundreds of different colors in soft plastics and jigs. I myself prefer three. One dark like this black ice, one bright like a blue ice, and then something in between that's natural. You want to match your current conditions on the water. If it's a bright sunny day and the water is crystal clear, you use a bright color. If you got that green tinge stain that's perfect for walleye fishing on the Detroit River with some cloud cover and some overcast, you wanna use something dark. 
and in between that, something natural. I don't think the bass color options out there sell the fish more than they sell the fishermen. It is the presentation of that dying bait fish. In addition to presentation, every day is different on how you jig that river. Whether it's an aggressive snap or almost like walking the dog, it's finding that right presentation to entice that strike. Now, when all else fails, you'll catch fish on a sling hook. Simple as that. Okay, I hope this video helped you in some way. If you have any further questions, please comment below. And in our next video, we're gonna discuss setting up our sonar specific to vertical jigging. Don't forget to turn your notifications on. We'll see you then.